Okay. I am tired. I have not slept. I've already failed at this video once. I really shouldn't be trying it again. But I'm stubborn. I'm going to I'm going to give it I'm going to give it a try. Um I've been thinking about how to discuss like all the things that are going along with this new mastery tree and you know how I feel about it and how I feel the game is suffering because it's too overpriced and just all these different things that I've been trying to wrap up into you know, maybe not one video, but a couple, and still haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that. But it occurred to me, uh, driving back from the airport today, that the cost of MTG Arena is, in all respects, basically the same as co as what it costs to play the actual game. And here's my argument for that. I know that, you know, a very easy metric that people have used is that, you know, when you buy the $100 bundle and then you do the math on what it equates to buy a pack, uh, packs for gems, one pack is 600 gems. I'm sorry, one pack is 200 gems, three packs, 600. So one pack, when you do the math, equates to a dollar. And that's the easy kind of trivial information that people like to throw out there. Uh, when talking about is MTG Arena cheaper uh, than playing Paper Magic. And from that metric alone, it would seem like, yeah, it costs one quarter the price. Well, no, it really doesn't. And I argue, and basically I'm right, uh, that it costs basically about the same to play Paper Magic. It costs just about as much to play Paper Magic as it does to play Arena. And that's a big problem. Now, hear me out on this. Um, one thing that Arena, one thing that Paper Magic has that Arena doesn't have is the general economy that comes with you buying packs. You know, there's the secondary market, there's buying, there's selling, there's trading amongst players, and that does not exist here on Arena. Instead, we have this wild card system, which I have my own feelings on it. There's pros and cons, but for, for for the scope of this video, um, you know, a lot of people have already said, and I kind of agree, that rares are the most valuable slash most needed wild card in the game. Because rares are going to make up the bulk of your deck. Yes, you're going to have, you know, useful uncommons and commons, but they accumulate no problem. And yes, you're going to have mythics, but those are going to be like, you know, the star cards of your deck, where you're only going to need, you know, one or two probably. Uh, different mythics, maybe four, but again, they're not going to make up the bulk uh, in terms of the rarity of your deck. Most of them are going to be rare, mostly because of lands, but again, lands are going to be another video as well, if not a couple. Um, so, for my argument, we're going to go into this with the assumption that rares are... Rare wild cards are the most valuable card, okay? And it's how you're going to make a lot of your decks. Now... So, given that rare wild cards are where the value is in the game, let's do a little bit of quick math. Okay. You get rare wild cards per every six packs. And the fifth time that happens, you get a rare, a mythic rare wild card. Then we're just going to ignore those for the most part. So, for every... 30 packs you buy, you get four guaranteed rare wild cards. All right, that's number one. Number two, we're going to go ahead and kind of just to throw out a number, we're going to assume that of those 30 packs, you're also going to get two uh, rare wild cards just as random drops. So that's six wild cards, six rare wild cards. Okay. Um,. Now, I feel like I'm being a little bit generous in this estimation, uh, which I'll get to later, I guess. Um, but you're not always going to have just jank rares that you're not going to be able to use. Let's assume that the rares you are pulling that are rare cards and not mythic rares or any version of wild card. The rare cards that you do pull, we're going to say one out of every six is useful to you in some respect. 
you know, it's different if you have a lot in your library. I get that. But we're going to look at it from the standpoint of, like, if a set's just releasing, where you just don't have any of them yet. Um, so, we're going to say one out of every six rares that are pulled are useful to you. So, we're going to count those. And in order to add those to the six mythic rare... I'm sorry. To, to add those to the six rare wild cards we get for every 30 packs, we have to do a little bit more quick math. We have to look at the 30 packs we open. We have to subtract one of those rare slots for the random mythic rare wild card that drops one out of every 30 packs. So that's 29 packs left. Um, assuming the same rough drop ratio for mythic rares and paper magic, about 1 in 8 packs, we're going to have to subtract, just to round it, we'll subtract uh, 4 more rares from that slot. So you go from 29 to 25. And then you also have to subtract the two rare wild cards that we're counting that drop randomly. Not, not the guaranteed one that's part of the, you know, wild card wheel. Not that. The two that drop randomly. So it goes from 25, so it goes from 29, it goes from 30 to 29 to 25 to 23. And so one in six actual rare cards being pulled from packs that would be useful to you in building a deck or building a small handful of decks, the good rares, if you will. Out of the 23, we're going to round it to 24, uh, packs that are left over, um, if it's 1 in 6, that's 4 more rares. So, at the end of the day, we have the 4 rare wild cards that are guaranteed from the wheel here, the 2 rare wild cards that will drop randomly, and the four rare cards that will be of use to us. That's ten rare cards that are useful to us. And we're going to count the rest... We're not going to count the rest toward anything. Because, again, the mythics, the uncommons, and the commons, they all just end up taking care of themselves for the most part most of the time. That's going to be the assumption going into this. So, if we're getting ten rare cards every thirty packs and nothing else. Because remember, we're not counting the rest of it, because it all takes care of itself for the most part, like I said. Then the cost of a booster pack is not a dollar. The cost of a booster pack is three dollars. Because one with that ratio, only one out of three packs will have given you some value, given you something you needed. The rest will have been a pointless purchase. And, you know, the only time that that changes is when you've amassed most, if not all, of the cards in a set, which no one is going to do. Dear God, no one will do that. It's like, you have to spend so much to get to that point, then it's like, the... It doesn't plateau. The cost... The, the cost of the packs themselves don't plateau until you've spent, you know, an, un an obscene amount of money on them. Okay? We're just talking about if you're starting out with the bare basics, nothing from the set, starting from scratch. So, with two out of... the th Two out of every three packs being worthless, the real cost of a pack is not a dollar a piece. You're spending 600 gems, three dollars, on one pack. That is of use to you because, again, there's no trading, buying, selling, secondary market economy in this game. Which, again, pros and cons, but different discussion. So, really, the true cost of your packs are $3 a piece. Now, let's say, just for just as a rough estimation, let's say that you know your standard player is going to buy, let's say, one... Your average player is just going to buy like one sealed booster box okay, per season. Um, because no one, we're not talking about MSRP here. No one pays MSRP. No one, you know, a dollar for a pack here versus three ninety nine for a pack MSRP in the real world. I mean, number one, no one pays MSRP. They buy boxes. Number two, as we've just concluded, the real cost of a pack is really like $3. So, anyway, let's say a person spends, you know, a person on average near release 
probably will spend between 100 and 120 a box. So let's split the difference. We're going to say $110 for a box, which again comes with all the pros and cons of the buying, selling, and trading economy because they're obviously not going to pull everything they need, but the cards they do pull as a whole, none of them are intrinsically worthless to them. They can either sell them or trade them for other cards that they need, so they can turn it into something that's useful to them. You can't do that on Arena. And you can't even, based on what I was just talking about, because we did, we included the wild card factor, okay? So you can't, you can't use that argument against what I just said. So, anyway, there, there, there was a thought in there somewhere, basically saying, like, the, oh, I don't know, I know what I was trying to say. The, the, the idea that the counter to the no buying, selling, trading economy that's, that, that is non-existent on Arena, the counter to that being the wild card system is already taken into um, consideration, is already given weight. That's why we counted the wild cards to give it weight. So you have the you have that economy in Paper Magic that doesn't exist in Core Set. So back to what I was getting at: the cost of a sealed box, what is included in the cost of that box, is the economy that accompanies it, that exists with it, that exists with the physical, sealed, real-world product. So, let's say average cost $110 someone will pay every three months, every season, every time a new set releases, and the bo standard box comes with 36 packs. So how much is that per pack? $3. That's $3. That's the same cost. Hell no. That's the same cost of what it costs to play. To, to get the same equivalent is $3. That's, that's the equivalent of what it costs. It, it plays this. It, it costs the same amount to play MTG Arena as it does to play physical Magic the Gathering. That's bananas. That's, that's complete. Like, I was, I was thinking about this and I was like, wow. Wow, that's wild, right, Sparky? Ever think of the multiverse when it seems like it's cheaper, but really it's the same price? That's wild. And I I found it fascinating that, you know, it's it's very easy to just kind of see that as the easy conclusion of a dollar a pack here versus four dollars a pack in the real world. And when you go through those assumptions of the wild card system with the equivalence of the trading system that exists in the real world and the factor of nobody pays MSRP and you do all that math and you do all those estimations, it's not any cheaper. It is not any cheaper. And the one argument you could make is if, you know, you are farming for the in-game currency and are on top of your daily goals and rewards you know it averages out but number one we're not talking about that would have been free anyway like we're not talking about that it would have cost the same amount whether you put money in or didn't put money in zero okay but for argument's sake i went ahead and did the math okay if you're a person who's on top of your stuff every single day you will with the with the present system they have right now, the present mastery tree they have right now, you will um, you will end up accumulating a hundred and, and again th this isn't this isn't counting the mastery pass because you know that's more money that you'd have to throw out it so I'm leaving that out but hopefully they change this to something different but not counting the mastery pass because again it's more money you'd be putting into it and I really don't feel like adding that to it. Um, I guess basically with that math, you can kind of draw the same conclusions I drew. You just times it by three because the real cost of a pack is two dud packs plus a pack that's actually worth something to you. So, you know, $30, $10 for 30 packs. If 20 of those packs are worthless, that's $10 for 10 packs. So a dollar a pack. Wow, it's 10 packs. Anyway, <coughs> geez, I got to wrap this up. So I went ahead and did the math. 
again, not counting the mastery pass if you got it, just the regular uh, top row rewards. I did the math. If you're on top of your shit and you do all of your daily rewards and you're averaging whether you get the 500 or the um, you're averaging whether you get the 500 or the 750, and you do up to four wins, so 250 for the first win and um, 100 for the next three wins, and you do that for the entire season, you net yourself about 145 extra packs for that season that are just free. And if you spent, let's say for this argument, $110 uh, on pa on a sealed box, except it's in the game, it's that version to where all the packs have intrinsic value, uh, your average cost per pack is $1.3. If you are someone who comes in and plays every three days... And does the same thing, but they so they let their dailies accumulate to the maximum three, but they also forego the um, two days worth of gold and XP accumulation from wins. Uh, your average pack cost is about 1.8, 1 1.9, 1 because I'm realizing I left out a little bit of XP, so we'll just say 1.9 dollars for the once every three day players. And that is, and they get about 69 or 70 extra packs for the whole season, for that three-month period, for coming in every three days and doing all their shit. And for the person that would just come and play on the weekend, for like, we'll just say two days on the weekend. <coughs> for the person that would come in and do that, their average cost, if they also put in $110 a month, their average cost per booster pack will be $2.6. So... For all of you who want to use that metric, you know, there it is. D depending on your how often you play, your average cost of a pack is going to be $1.3 to $1.9 to $2.6 if you want those numbers. But, again, I don't feel like those numbers should be there at all because we're talking about – because those are just going to be free if you're on top of it. Because we're talking about the actual cost of if you want to go in and play this game and be able to experience the game that is Magic the Gathering to a much more fuller extent than what your... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Than what you're um, limited to on a free or mostly free account. Because, you know, I've been playing this for a little over a month and here's what I've got. For commons, uncommons, rares, and mythics. I think I might have spent like four rares total. Maybe 43 rares. This is what I got for months of play. And I've got a deck here that, I, that again, I was, I'm was i considering building. You know, it's this Grixis Control with just a bunch of Nicol Bolas cards. I'm short like 20 rares. From being, able, I think, like 19 now since I got a couple more packs. But I'm short like 19 to 20 rares. And that's gonna this is going to take me the rest of the season to accumulate. And at that point, I'm just going to let it roll over into the next season, wait a few weeks, see what the top tier meta deck is, and maybe build that. Or maybe I'll still want to do Grixis for Legacy. And, and, and the point I'm trying to get across is, <coughs> you know, by letting yourself, by waiting, you know, if you're, the, the, the game kind of encourages discipline. That's the weird thing, because it's like, it's clearly overpriced, and that's what keeps people from dumping money into it. At least for just straight-up packs. And because of that, you're not able to experience what Magic the Gathering truly is. And I think that's a huge mistake. I mean, that's part of a ramble for another video, but the point, and I guess I'll try and wrap it up here, the point that I'm trying to make here is this whole argument of, you know, packs are a dollar here versus four dollars in the real world. There's a f few layers you got to get through, but at the end of the day, no. It's actually the same price. So it's like there's not really an incentive to play MTG Arena outside of the fact that it looks pretty. You know, and we're not even talking about all the cosmetic crap you can buy. There's, those are factors that also are given weight here that don't exist in Paper Magic. 
and it's just it's way too damn expensive it's way too damn expensive and it needs to be I've been saying it before and I'll say it again and in another video when I actually talk about the entire topic but they need to at least be cutting these prices in half for it to be worth people's time and money mostly uh, to play this game because right now it's not really worth either and that's a very bad balance to have that's a very odd thing for wizards to have shot for and apparently gotten at and so you know that, I think I had another point but who the hell remembers what it is certainly not me obviously and uh, so yeah that's all I had I just wanted to say that the cost of playing MTG Arena is basically the same as the cost of playing Paper Magic. That's all I got.